if you were to ask the average person what the largest theropod to ever exist was, if they even knew what a theropod was in the first place, then there's a pretty good chance that they'd say Spinosaurus. Now, as I discussed in my recent video on megatheropods, it's not the largest theropod to ever exist, but it is indeed the longest theropod to ever exist. And it might have just been the most bizarre dinosaur to ever live. Spinosaurus aegyptiacus was first discovered in 1912 in Egypt, first being described in 1915 by German paleontologist Ernst Stromer. In Greek, the genus name Spinosaurus translates directly to spined lizard, while the species or specific name Egyptiacus translates in Greek to Egyptian. So Spinosaurus aegyptiacus directly translates to Egyptian spined lizard. Spinosaurus for the longest time was believed to be the largest megatheropod to ever exist, growing to lengths of up to 20 metres and reaching weights of up to 22 tonnes, though today such estimates are believed to be massive exaggerations, based off material that was bombed in World War II around 1945. Recent GDI analysis of certain Tyrannosaurus rex and Giganotosaurus carolini specimens place such individuals far above the range of any known Spinosaurus, with Spinosaurus believed now to reach a length of around 14 to 15 metres and a weight of around 6 to 7 tonnes on average. Now, those are just the believe mass estimates and lengths, because Spinosaurus is anything but certain in various ways. Spinosaurus aegyptiacus was once reconstructed as looking like any other generic carnosaur species or genus, basically just looking like a T-Rex with a sail on its back, walking upright, as in kangaroo upright, with a very generic looking skull. I mean, Jesus, this looks so cursed. Yeah, but in all seriousness, the way we reconstruct Spinosaurids today has changed dramatically since the discovery of the British genus Baryonyx, which changed our view on Spinosaurids in the late 1980s, giving them a longer skull and a believed more semi-aquatic lifestyle. Next time you turn around, Spinosaurus will probably look a lot like this, which, come to think of it, might actually be the way we reconstruct it as it has gone through a lot of changes recently, especially in terms of its lifestyle. Around the late 2010s, early 2020s, a new Spinosaurus tail was reconstructed, looking a fair bit like that of a tadpole or eel, hence why many much more recent reconstructions have this creature looking like a fish as it swims, or an eel, or even a crocodile. In more recent news, Spinosaurus is believed to have been a pretty lousy, non-adept swimmer. And instead of filling the same relative ecological niche of a crocodile or alligator, it would have instead filled a niche pretty similar to a wading bird, similar to a stork or crane. The information I've gathered I've linked below, so you can read all about this and fact check me, making sure they are not giving misinformation. Probably the most interesting part about Spinosaurus is not to do with the actual physical creature itself, but rather the environment of the animals it lived alongside. What we now know as Spinosaurus aegyptiacus first appeared in what is today known as the Bahareya Formation in North Central Egypt. This formation has been dated from 100 to 95 million years ago in the early Sedimanian stage of the mid-Cretaceous. Aside from Spinosaurus aegyptiacus, another pretty popular dinosaur genus and species known from this certain formation is Carcharodontosaurus saharicus, which was a Carcharodontosaurid which is known to have grown to between 12 and 13 metres in length, weighing from around 5 to 6 and possibly up to 7 metric tonnes. The reason for two large megatheropod species coexisting in the one formation is likely because of niche partitioning, a phenomena where different species fill different ecological niches and adapt to them. So competition and as a result conflict is kept to a minimum. And as a result, Carcharodontosaurus likely hunted more terrestrial prey such as sauropods, while Spinosaurus likely hunted more aquatic prey 
though both genre and species likely hunted both aquatic and terrestrial prey if they had the chance, as they were possibly more generalist than we like to imagine most of the time. Another contemporary of Spinosaurus, at least from the Bahariya formation, was Bahariasaurus ingens, described in 1934 with its remains again being destroyed in 1945 during the bombing of the museums the remains were held in. So we now know this species from only sketches and eyewitness accounts, at least from the fossil material. Bahariasaurus was definitely on the smaller side and was not a megatheropod, though it still reached around two tonnes on average, and it likely hunted slightly smaller prey than the other two megatheropods again filling a different ecological niche. Rather interestingly, the size difference between the sauropods and the theropods of the Bahariya formation was minimal at best, as although this formation was home to various large megatheropods, it was also home to several smaller sauropods, such as Egyptosaurus and Paralatitan, although to be fair, Paralatitan could reach over 50 tons in some cases. Egyptosaurus, however, was not large for a sauropod at all, only reaching around 15 metres in length, weighing around 7 tonnes, so about the size of a relatively large African elephant. There was also a giant species of coelacanth fish, possibly on the menu for Spinosaurus, known as Morsonia, a fish that could weigh up to 1.3 to 1.5 tonnes, at a length of about 5 metres at maximum. It also seems as if the Bahariya formation shares more than a few similarities with the Moroccan Kemkem formation or Kemkem beds, also home to Spinosaurus. Along with Spinosaurus, Carcharodontosaurus and Morsonia, there was also a possible synonym of Bahariasaurus known as Celtodromaeus, which likely is not a separate genus from Bahariasaurus given the minimal remains for both genera. Another possible prey item for Spinosaurus were the unnamed Chemchem plesiosaurs, which are of an indeterminate genus, being just the right size to make a good prey item for Spinosaurus. Although today both the Bahariya and Chemchem formations are very far from the coast, a lot has changed in the past roughly 90 million years. And around 95 to 100 million years ago, the Chemchem formation and the Bahariya formations were both river deltas, with dozens, if not hundreds and thousands of freshwater rivers flowing through the formations, being home to a healthy amount of biodiversity. It wasn't just the physical appearance, nor the behaviour and ecology of Spinosaurus that made this animal so fascinating. It was also the ecological role it played in its ecosystem, which is now over 95 million years removed from our own.